Hey there, Postal here. Well, look at this plane. Oh no. Oh crap. Well, dang it. Oh, this is going to be a struggle of a game. Not only is it a bad map for us in an FGA1, but we are up against an EF131 and an F86. Oh, jeez. This is the worst, like, you can't get too much worse on the matchmaking. And what do I mean by that? Well, an F86, unfortunately, is the tier 10 after this plane. That's not the unfortunate part. The unfortunate part is literally anything, like, any good thing about the FJ1, the F86 is better. Um, so what, what's going good for the FJ1? Well, you've got a decent amount of, bur of speed difference over the P51H. Um, you've got basically the same altitude performance, but you've got a little bit more maneuverability. And, even better, your guns are completely centrally located, so you're able to get your guns on target quicker. And as such, you're able to, to just feel more comfortable in your interactions. Um, that being said, the F-86 has the same exact guns. So if you're getting the same exact guns as a tier 9 on a tier 10, guess what's going to happen? Everything else about the plane is going to be better. The altitude performance is significantly better. The second best in the game uh, for a tier 10 fighter. Um, the airspeed is ridiculous. The maneuverability is excellent. Um, almost turn fighter maneuverability on the F-86. And so, as such, you're, there's just not a lot we can do against an F-86. Can't outspeed it, can't outturn it. Um, what we can do, though, is try to get a jump on it. And that's about all we can do. Is try to catch him out and hope he's on low health. Um, and that's it, because we can't outturn him and we can't outspeed him. We can't get away in any, in any shape or form. Which is kind of a shame, because the FJ-1 really excels at being a jack of all trades. You kind of determine what's the best course of action to try to speed or to try to turn. Um, literally any other plane in the game, that's the thought process. And so, getting stuck against a plane that you can't do either of those is going to be kind of frustrating. So, let's see what we can do here. I can get rid of him before he realizes he's in trouble. I can. He was going for a rear gunner on a um, ground attacker and didn't realize I was actually the one shooting him. So that's awesome. That was perfect. Um, I couldn't ask for a better interaction against that F-86, to be honest. Um, I've gone against Tallgrass before, though, and I know that will not happen again. He doesn't uh, make a whole lot of mistakes. So... See what we can do here. Dang it! Just hoping to save our bomber. There we go. Nice. Use our altitude performance. Our altitude is not over the top great, but it is the second best um, at this tier. I think the uh, TA-183 is the only thing that's better, and it's barely better. Got better altitude performance than the Mig-9. Yeah, so like, you know, those things that you tend to think are really good um, altitude fighters, this is actually better altitude. And you've definitely got better maneuverability than those altitude fighters. So again, it's just something you want to pay attention to. Take advantage of. I'm trying to look for this, this saber. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, the Sabre really is the one plane that I desperately don't want to get caught unawares by. Uh, is the side 211 going to stay in the sector? Or... No, he's going to turn away. Alright, so let's head back. Um, let's see what we need to do. Just keep on working here. We do have an XF-90 on our team, so that's definitely a good thing. No arguments in regards.
regards to that kind of interaction, let's frickin' go. Dude, uh, tier 10 is like just the worst for an FJ1, especially not specialized. If this plane was specialized, I'd feel more comfortable with my airspeed. But that being said, right now, uh, I could be in a lot of trouble. Uh, luckily, it's a W2, not a W3. Put on my new magnetic control assist for no reason. It's kind of a shame. Let's turn this thing around. Get defending. This is what I like. At least the guns are centrally located, so that way I'm able to get these gu uh, the guns on target and able to just defend like the Dickens, right? I-211's back. Good. Um, what else are we up against here? Can we get somebody to get that guy? Because if we can get that guy, then we can definitely keep hanging on to the mining facility. We're trying to out play an EF-131 is not necessarily easy. We're trying to get this F-86 caught caught out. He's not paying attention again. I wonder if the radio equipment is actually doing something for his ability to spot me. I mean, I did literally get by, uh, just by that just now. We'll, we'll see back in the um, hangar. Um... Yeah, I, I honestly think that probably has something to do with it. At least has something to do with it. Great job today. Phew. We'll be waiting for you back home. All right. Wow. That made a, a pretty big difference because I've again I've gone against that pilot before. He's not usually aloof, and um, so I'm gonna blame that on the radio equipment. Let's head back. All right, so that game should not have been as good as it was, right? Uh, the odds were 100% stacked against us. Um, now, obviously, uh, so the FJ-1 is, is a plane I like. Um, it's not my favorite by any means. It's definitely not my go-to. Um, so, <laughs> uh, let's just second here. Um, it's definitely not my go-to at tier 9, mainly because it's not specialized in it. Well, that's not even mainly. Mainly because I just think there's a lot better planes at tier 9. Um, that being said, this plane's not specialized yet, and we'll go over my setup on the plane in just a second. I think specialization will certainly help this plane, um, but I think, honestly, the equipment setup I, I've, I've changed this to. Um, ch just changes this plane a little bit for the best. So let's take a quick look at the end game played here. 14 kills. Um, I mean, the second class chevrons there, so did really good work. We got had a lot of support from the XF90. We could not have, have gotten this win, honestly, without the XF90. As good as I did, um, I think the XF90 had to have uh, made the EF... Yeah, he got destroyed four times. Holy crap. Um, and the 228 was the thing that was killing him all the time. Okay, well... I mean, 228s are really freaking uh, deadly, that's for sure. He got seven kills. I'm still I'm still certain that he was making the EF-131 look over his shoulder all the time. Irrespective, even if he didn't kill the 131, he still had an impact on the battle. You need your top-tier planes to, to have an impact at the very least if not carry. Um, and again, I've gone against this uh, uh, this F-86 pilot before, not in the F-86, but in other games. He's a good pilot. I think what it came down to was my equipment setup. And I want to show you guys my equipment setup. I've just changed this recently. Um, and I've had nothing but great games in it since I've changed it. So, some, some things about this. So, you're in a tier 9 
fighter, unspecialized. You're never going to outspeed anything. Even the FJ-1, which is pretty darn fast for a tier 9 fighter, you're not going to be able to outspeed anything that you're going to run into because you're tier 9. You're eventually going to have, you know, run it, you're going to be in tier 10 battles. All the tier 10s are going to be more, you know, more speedy than you, even if you've got speed equipment on there. Um, and you're going to be running into a lot of specialized tier 9s. The, the MEP 1092 is a very popular plane, and it's going to be specialized when you run into it. The Yak-19 is a very popular plane, and it's going to be specialized. The MiG-9 is less popular. TA-183 is not popular at all. F-6U is not popular at all. The Attacker um, is very popular. Uh, the 162 is definitely not popular. The Attacker is another one of those popular planes. The airspeed on the Attacker is going to be faster than you. The airspeed on the 1092 is going to be faster than you. And so... Rather than going all in on speed, that's not going to really make a difference. I, I decided to go in for maneuverability. If I can't outspeed them, which I'll never be able to outspeed them, at least until I'm specialized, I might as well be able to try to outturn them. Um, and so that's why I've gone with the turn equipment here. On top of that, I've again recently changed to the navigational radio equipment, helping concealment and my ability to detect the enemy. This has helped immensely, actually. I, I don't know if this is hyperbole or if, if, I'm, if I'm overstating it, but the games I've had, I felt so comfortable in. I felt like I was dictating the engagement uh, more often than not. And that's really important in a plane like this where you're typically hampered um, versus a lot of the planes out there. Like in something versus an F-86, I talked about it in the game. The F-86 is this plane... But better. There's there's no there's nothing that the FJ1 can do better than an F86, and that's just the unfortunate part of it. That's great for the F86, but it's unfortunate for the FJ1. FJ1 can outturn a 1092. You know, an FJ1 can outturn a lot of the planes in the game. It can out altitude basically everything. Um, it can out you know so this is a lot, it can outspeed a lot of the planes. Once it's specialized, um, you know it can do that even better. The thing with the FJ-1 is you want to be able to, to, to look at your, your planes that you're going against. Okay, so what am I better than this plane at? If you're going against a Yak-19, an LA-160, a Ki-162, okay, you can outspeed and out-altitude those planes. You can't out-turn them. So pull those planes up to a higher altitude where, where their maneuverability is worse, and you can take advantage of them because your, your maneuverability at this tier is actually really quite good. Um, if you're going against some of those speedier planes, then use your maneuverability to out dogfight them. Um, and so that's that's the kind of setup, that, the kind of mentality I have with the FJ-1, is I kind of say, well, I'm better than, than almost all the planes at something at Tier 9. I just need to know what I'm better at it then and use that to my advantage. Where your struggle is when you go against a specialized plane, specialized 1092 can outmaneuver you typically, you know. Specialized Yak-19 might even be able to outspeed you. Cannot altitude you, so you need to be mindful of that altitude. That's that's your that's your trump card, is your altitude. Keep in mind when you when a, a plane gets into the yellow for altitude, it impacts its uh, uh, maneuverability and it impacts its airspeed, aka it also impacts its altitude performance. So if you're able to uh, maintain your altitude at like kind of the highest white altitude threshold to where you could go up to yellow or you typically you're staying in the white most of those out uh, those turn fighters that you're going against if they're at that altitude with you they are significantly hampered by that altitude so things like a yak 19 that are up at 8,000 feet have lost a lot of their airspeed and have lost a lot of their maneuverability you can take advantage of that i've out dog fight uh, dog fought <laughs> a yak 19 at um, at higher altitude because my plane was at 8,000 feet and still had its full maneuverability characteristics and that plane was at 8,000 feet and it lost a lot of its maneuverability. Yak-19 is not a Yak-19 at 8,000 feet. So keep that in mind um, when you're having to dogfight or when you choose to dogfight. Planes that are actually really big pain in the butt to this um, are actually gonna be things like a Key 94 
It has reasonable altitude. It has those heavy hitting cannons that if you make a mistake, you're, you're done for. Um, you want to use your speed in that situation. Same with against the Spitfire 14. Use your speed against those planes. Uh, but again, tier 10 can be a big struggle with the FJ-1. It just can. There's a lot of great tier 10 fighters. Um, and this plane just, it's, it's a balanced tier nine, which means it can unfortunately be outdone by almost every single tier 10 if you let it. I'm going to say go ahead and stop getting texts. <laughs> I'm going to highly recommend this equipment setup. I've had, it's, the game's been a lot easier with this setup. Um, the radio equipment allows me to dictate the battle a little bit more. And the maneuverability setup allows me to um, get my guns on target and, and have an impact that way. Your cannon, your cannons, your machine guns are centrally located. So the accuracy really isn't a big deal. Um, you've, you're going to be able to get them on target pretty quickly. Um, and so this setup, uh, like I said, I'm, I don't know, maybe it's just because I've had a string of really good games in the FJ1 and I'm really hyped about it. But I'd like to see, uh, do other people have this setup? Have we even tried the radio equipment? Most people don't use radio equipment on fighters. I'd love to hear your guys' opinion, um, You know what steps you've taken. I know that a lot of people struggle in the FJ1. I've had struggling games in the FJ1, especially uh, when you're going against those specialized planes or when you're going against Tier 10 fighters. It can be a struggle. Um, my, my one saving grace was always, well, at least you're getting the F-86A, which is a great, great plane at Tier 10 uh, once you get past this. I'm trying to get the FJ1 specialized, but even not specialized, I've been having a handful of really good games with this setup. Some other things uh, in regards to my pilot setup, I've got, again, kind of a balanced setup. I put on Aerodynamics Expert and um, Aerobatics Expert, again, to help the maneuverability. The Aerodynamics Expert is doubling down, well, 40%ing down on the equipment that's already on here. Aerodynamics Expert is helping the maneuverability. I've got eight points, so I put two points towards Marksman 1 and two points point, two points towards Engine Guru. Once I get my ninth skill point, I might take off Marksman 1 and put down Engine Guru 2. Um, that's probably what my, my next point will actually be doing. If that really negatively impacts the um, accuracy of the forward firing guns, I'll put Marksman 1 back on here and then so be it. Once I specialize it, I will be putting speed equipment on here. Um, once you're specialized, okay, now you can upgrade the equipment past improved. You can get advanced or ultimate equipment. So then your airspeed actually can be a positive thing and not just a mediocre thing. Um, I will keep you guys updated. But, yeah, I've, I've, I can't tell you the last time I was excited to fly the FJ-1. And I've actually been having really good games in it and I'm pretty well excited for it. As far as my consumables are concerned, this is my standard postal setup for fighters. Um, first aid kit, pneumatic control assist, engine cooling, universal ammo. Um, I will almost certainly be putting the improved mixture control on here. I don't get the engine knocked out all that often. And for me, I tend to just kind of go all in when it comes to this kind of shenanigans. That being said, putting an um, engine restart on here instead of... Um, Instead of the improved mixture control, it's definitely a viable option. There's no harm in that, of course. That being said, engine cooling, I think, is going to be your first option for the consumables when you're not specialized. That extra 10 seconds worth of boost um, every 60 or 90 seconds, whatever it is, 90 seconds, um, is, is more helpful than the manual engine restart, in my opinion. If you need some speed just to get you out of, a, a, out of a pinch or to get you to another sector quickly, which is typically what I use it for, it's not necessarily to get away from trouble because the Tier 9 and Tier 10, there's not a whole lot you're going to be able to get away from except for like Yak-19s and Spitfires. Typically, I use it because I need to get to another sector to defend it really quickly or attack it really quickly. Um, and so I find engine cooling to be more viable. But that being said, I know not everybody's postal, and so uh, manual engine restart um, it's certainly not necessarily a bad option there. 
Anyway, so what is your guys' opinion of the FJ-1? Again, I know it's not a well-loved plane by any means. It's definitely a struggle for a lot of players. I think if you like the P-51H, you should like the FJ-1. Um, the biggest issue that the FJ-1 has is it runs into Tier 10. It's honestly its biggest issue. If it only ran into Tier 9, um, I think it'd probably be a lot more loved. But being Tier, you know, running into Tier 10 planes... And there's a pretty big jump on Tier 10 characteristics from Tier 9. I think that's its biggest struggle. But it's radio equipment. It might be eye-opening. Check it out. Tell me what you think. I'd love to hear your comments down below. Uh, you know me. I will definitely respond. Or feel free to join my Discord. Uh, this, the link is in the description below. And otherwise, I uh, hope you enjoyed the gameplay. I hope you have a great day. Bye.